break. And now we're back for another edition of the Australian Association of Street Photographers Speakers Series for 2022. I'm Russell Mason, Vice President of ASPE, and I'll be your host for tonight. So uh, I'd just like to kick off by asking everyone to make sure that their devices are set to mute so we can reduce the background noise as we go along. Um, anyone who's got any questions tonight, just type them into the chat and myself or a uh, lovely secretary, Emma, will ask um, questions as we go along. Okay, so tonight's guest speaker, we're delighted to have Perth-based street shooter Christian Close. Now, Christian has a deep love for the human condition and large congregations seeking out and documenting Perth's social events, including protests, carnivals, cultural events and the bush Dorf scene, going to be interested to hear about that. So tonight's talk is titled Out of Exile, and that's in relation to or reference to his two-year absence from social media. So we'll be hearing about the reasons behind this self-imposed exile and the lessons or whatever he's learned from that. So uh, without further ado, I'll pass it over to you. Thanks, Christian. No worries. Thank you very much, Russell, uh, and thank you to um, Aspi for um, having me on tonight. I'm looking forward to uh, just just going through some of the photographs I've taken over the last uh, few years, and um, more so from a like a philosophical point of view um, about uh, why I've I've taken up photography and some of the challenges that I've um, faced along the way. I've had um, some you know high highs and, and very low lows along the way um but it's been a really good uh learning uh learning process um and i think that all of my experiences help contribute towards that and and i've taken a lot of key learnings from that so um i i'll go through the photos um probably in sections there probably like uh, my early years um then i'll explain uh, my years um photographing the bush doof scene and then some of the newer photographs that I've taken. So I won't probably go into too many of the, the stories behind the photographs, but if you've got any questions at all regarding any of the individual um, photographs at all, please just pop it in the chat and I'm happy to explain maybe the, the story behind it or what's going on if, if, if that's your thing. Um, okay, so I'll just uh, see if I can get this right. Okay, all good. We can see the um, first screen. Yep, we can see it. Beautiful. Okay, uh, so I'll just take you through some of my uh, my earlier stuff here. Uh, basically, I started my my street photography journey um, a bit, uh, you know, hit, hitting the ground running. I, I didn't know much about street photography, but I had a, a very deep love for uh, traveling. And then I saw some photographs from some street photographers from a, from a photo book that I saw at a um, uh, at a news uh, a library, sorry, and it piqued my interest there. And I guess um, I, I dived straight into the deep end there, and I just researched. I really wanted to do a workshop, and there wasn't too much locally uh, for that was available to me. And I didn't know too many street photographers, but um, uh, I do know that. Um, uh, Magic Dakowitz, a Polish photographer. His name popped up quite high on the Google list there and he was offering uh, street photography workshops. So without very little experience at all and, and much knowledge about uh, street photography, I, I booked a workshop and, and went to Istanbul to do a workshop with him. And um, I guess that started my journey and it was a very um, steep learning curve there. So uh, I guess I guess there were probably really good elements and really not so good elements about um, uh, taking this approach. Uh, I guess one of the really good things is that I got to, you know, travel and be overseas and uh, go to a really exotic location. Um, and I got to be around other like-minded photographers as well. And it was really good to be in that kind of group kind of environment there uh, with others. Um, to support yourself and to bounce off. And I really needed that because I didn't know too much about uh, street photography at all. And uh, on, on the probably not so good side, I guess uh, I probably didn't heed the, you know, the kind of feeling within me that, um, you know, I, I, I kept reading that street photography should be something that, uh, you know, you should be able to go out in your back, you know, walk out your front door and do anywhere. And uh, I guess there was an element where uh, jumping straight into a, a uh, workshop like this in a very wonderfully beautiful country with a completely different culture, um, kind of romanticised uh, street photography a lot um, and uh, probably got me hungry to, to really 
undertake street photography in, in exotic locations. So over the next few years, I really, um, you know, jumped on the plane quite a lot, um, going to like Myanmar, Cambodia, um, you know, Thailand, um, uh, just a heap of places uh, to do street photography, to do to do workshops, you know, and uh, I guess uh, and India as well. Um, I guess there was an element there that I, I I found it really intoxicating and really addictive to do, but there was that um, that kind of you know balancing act where there where you you go home and and maybe I didn't look into my own backyard enough. I didn't find shooting in the Australian backyard um, uh, as interesting, which which obviously is a downside because I really want to enjoy street photography wherever I go. Um, so these are, these are just some um, photographs I've uh, taken in India a few years ago. I'm heading there again in um, uh, uh, October to um, join a workshop with the wonderful uh, Julia Condington. I'm looking forward to, to, to learning a lot from her um, and pushing the boundaries uh, with my photography. Um, but yeah, so I really, really learned a lot in a short amount of time. Uh, with these kind of workshops and uh, it was really a really fun experience to uh, be with like-minded others um, to see these different cultures and to really learn um, a style of photography that was uh, probably very difficult at first but I finally you know uh, got, got into the rhythm to um, eventually um, but yeah likewise after coming back from from India um, I tried to photograph um, uh, in my own backyard, and I find, found it really difficult. I mean, uh, you look through some of these photographs, and, and a lot of the individuals there are wearing such wonderfully exotic, like bright coloured, vivid clothing. They've got such a um, outwardly expression of culture and religion. And then um, I come back home to Perth, uh, you know, like most isolated capital city in the world, <laughs> and there's a uh, everyone's wearing black and grey and white. Everyone's, you know. You know, kind of like a sheep herd mentality. People are doing the same thing. They're acting the same. People are doing the nine to five grind. Um, so I found it really difficult there to, how do I, how do I really like get out of this rut? Um, it's it, it's really I, I I I can't keep going overseas. It's not and it's not uh, sustainable financially. It's not sustainable for me to do uh, in the long term. I have to. This love for street photography, I have to, um, you know, branch out and learn how to do it uh, back home. Um, but yeah, I, I think at that it was that turning point in India where um, I'd really learned to uh, learn a lot of techniques like layering, um, trying to make a you know a two dimensional image feel uh, layered, um, where that became a lot more of a fluid process where beforehand say in Myanmar and um, Cambodia and, and, and Istanbul I was um, erring on the sides of uh, towards you know like portraits and um, very flat images you know that, that, the kind of like travel kind of photographs like I was happy with them I look back at them uh, earnestly and, and really enjoy them but I think it was India was a turning point uh, where uh, I really kind of developed a style that I was uh, really happy with and and it's 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 chaotic there and i kind of i kind of really enjoy the chaos so i kind of find a, like a peace and tranquility amongst it because um there's just so much around you and so i think it was a turning point there with that workshop where things started to, to fit together <clears throat> so uh I remember when coming back from the from the Indian workshop there uh, that I really tried to go out into my own backyard um, a lot, um, and that that kind of difficulty kind of uh, really had an impact on on uh, probably my mental health approach towards uh, street photography because um, I was I was photographing all of these style of photos. Uh, uh, in India and all these exotic locations, but I couldn't quite replicate it back home in Australia. Um, the, the, and, and that really took some form of uh, impact on my mental uh, health, I would say, because, um, uh, you know, you, you kind of have self-doubt that, you know, are you really a good photographer? Do you really have that creative vision to to be a good street photographer? Because um, I've, I've spent this really intensive 
uh, period overseas. And now I've come home and um, I, I'm just not replicating that. Uh, I'm really having a different time shooting a lot of frames, just not finding that, um, that inspiration, you know. Uh, so I went through a lot of highs and lows, um, especially like even as recently as maybe uh, a year ago where I um, uh, just have a bit of self-doubt about uh, what, I need to, what I need to do with, with my photography and how do I approach it. So um, I guess that uh, pushed me to start uh, trial uh, try different styles of photography, uh, you know, different forms of um, framing and, and whatnot. So um, I'm really happy to, you know, just, just push myself to get out of that rut right there. Um, so yeah, just just on India itself. Uh, really, for those that haven't been there, I, re I really do recommend it. It's a, uh, an, an incredibly absorbing absorbing uh, uh, culture to be in. Uh, incredibly vivid co colors everywhere. Uh, the generally the, the the demographic there, they love their photos being taken, uh, and uh, it's just really really um, chaotic. Is is probably the best word to say it is it's all your senses are being stimulated at the same time there's really no sense of personal space uh, but on the flip side of that you look on the bright side it's it literally you can walk anywhere and there'll be photographic opportunities for you so for those that haven't been there I definitely do recommend it um, to take a deep breath to not let it uh, get to you because uh, it can be overwhelming at times and there was a couple of times I remember uh, very vividly uh, when I went there that it, it I went to a, uh, the Son Paul Mela, a really large uh, fair, and uh, there was probably in the middle of that workshop there. There was a couple of times where I just wanted to go back to the to the hotel because uh, it really was just just really overwhelming. There was just so much happening, and I was exhausted. Um, had a couple of you know, altercations with a couple of people over a misunderstanding, and um, it, it wasn't that I wanted to throw the towel in, but uh, I just needed to take a bit of a respite and, and, a, and a deep breath. And if you go on a workshop with Magic, he uh, for those, I know there's a couple of people in this this chat, they've had a workshop with Magic and he always says, just one last push, just one last push. And this is at like five o'clock in the evening and you're, you're, everything hurts and it just keeps pushing you. So um, just to, for those that are thinking about doing a workshop like that, it just bring very, very, very comfortable shoes. Uh, this is in um, uh, Myanmar. And as uh, around this time that I really try to push myself to get closer to subjects as well, um, I was really, you know, stepping back from from others before um, make, taking two dimensional photos. But it was good to to take a step back there. And this uh, utilizing different elements there, um, uh, using mirrors, framing people in in mirrors and whatnot to create a, a full uh, a full um, a frame to fill every corner and uh, Thailand here as well. Really good light life. I had my um, reservations about um, uh, Bangkok, um, probably because I watched The Hangover and they probably filmed that film in a certain style that makes you think that Bangkok's this really intimidating place where the heat and everything just gets to you and it's just this like intense place. But uh, looking back on it now, it's one of the most enjoyable Asian uh, cities that I've been to. Absolutely incredible uh, place to be around. The nightlife's absolutely fantastic just to mingle around. Um, just got two, two um, uh, polarizing images there two different experiences. Um, quite easy to get those kind of layered shots there in Bangkok streets because everyone spills out and there's just so much people just partying in the streets that don't have to necessarily go into the nightclubs. Um, and, and Japan here as well. And uh, San Francisco. Uh, I probably just want to touch on uh, like one of the, the things I've learned really uh, a lot uh, traveling with my partner, my wife. Uh, she has an incredible amount of patience for me. So I, I, I um, uh, just a shout out to her, big thank you. Uh, but what it has helped me do is to really see things a lot quicker than um, than what I was used to uh, prior to, to meeting her. Probably I was, I was a bit slow. I kind of like meander along and, you know, pick my brain at certain scenes. But obviously I, I'm 
you know, I'm on, I'm on a vacation with my, my partner. It's for us. It's not a street photography uh, vacation. So I really have to think on my feet. Um, and this particular shot, I had my doubts. I, I, had, I shot about 10, 15 frames before of her and nothing quite worked out. And uh, we started leaving and I had a lot of sense of regret that I didn't get the, the frame that I wanted. Um, but uh, I kind of kind of spoke to my wife and um uh, I know I'd been hanging around at the scene quite a lot, but um, I just said to her, look, I have to go back. I have to go back and photograph this lady. And um, uh, I ran over and just took a few more frames and got this photograph. So I uh, really do thank her for the patience that uh, she's she's had over the years. But it really, um, on the flip side of that, I look at I look at the key takeaways for any for anything. And one of the key takeaways is to uh, think on my feet, frame quickly, um, and to to really focus on on um, make sure that the you know the vacation I'm having is is um, not for myself it's it's um, for um, my partner and I uh, so I'll go into now uh, my experiences here with uh, uh, bush doofs or doof, doof land probably an ongoing project of mine um, that I've been wanting to close off for quite some time uh, so for a few years there um, I immersed myself in uh, the local uh, bush doof scene um, not all of the events happen you know physically out in the bush um, a lot of these um, um, a lot of these uh, events and parties also in the city as well because um, it's all linked to Blazing Swan which is a regional Burning Man event and a lot of the camps hold their fun fundraisers either in the city with a party or out in um, the bush with a, an actual bush doof. Um, so I'll just go through some of the photos here uh, from my time here. Uh, so I don't really go to a lot of these anymore um, if any. Um, but I uh, really had a wonderful time uh, immersing myself in this experience. I guess the really good takeaway from this one is the, the sense of community that these people have. Um, for all of the, all of the, you know, all of the bush doofs and all of the, the parties and everything and the events that I went to, um, I've never seen one fight in any of them in the, la in the three years that I went to them, not one. There was not rarely an act of aggression or people fighting, um, unlike, you know, uh, normal nightclubs, stuff like that. People were incredibly hospitable and um, uh, generous and um, very um, happy sense of place for these people and it was really warming experience to go there and share that experience with some really close friends of mine uh, as well uh, we went to quite a few so it was really good to to see these different camps that have different themes and different styles and they have these different dress up parties and it was naturally like I was incredibly gravitated to, uh, gravitated towards that because I'd been overseas so much and walking the streets in Perth I, I didn't get that kind of like sensory um uh, didn't uh, satisfy my appetite for that sensory experience, but going to these bush um, uh, really did, you know, because uh, all these people congregated, they're wearing all these um, incredible clothes and, and, and dressing up and they had, you know, really unique music and whatnot. Uh, and so uh, the bush themselves were incredible experiences as well. Go out into the bush, really remote locations and uh, yeah, just, uh, um, basically very loud music for 24 hours on end and you camp out as far as you can to, you know, try and get a good night's sleep. Um, but, yeah, likewise with the events in the city, like a really good community of people um, that came together and people really easy to talk to and to, to network and to get to know and made some really good friends over the years. <clears throat> uh, so some really good, ex uh, some really exuberant characters um, as well that... Uh, uh, that I met along the way. Actually, this guy here, I've got maybe with the book that I'm I'm doing for Doofland. There's about I've got about five or six frames of this same guy um, across the same night, and um, I don't know what I should choose, but I think I'll choose this one. He was just a wonderfully um, unique character, and I'm I'm very glad I came across him. <clears throat> So with these events, um, another good key takeaway that I had from this one is that it was a really good opportunity to, to really exercise layering, um, trying to create depth with my photographs as well, uh, because especially with these 
with these theme theme parties there was a certain sense of um you know like a vanity kind of thing for these for these people so they really love take have their photographs uh taken so it was really easy for me to just hang around in a particular scene and uh take a few of the standard shots where people you know come together and they hug and they smile and you take their photos but then you ask me if you can hang around and they had no issues and it's really good after I've taken the normal kind of event photo that I, I get to work and to start layering things up. Uh, one of my earlier ones here, uh, quite a, an interesting character. Uh, I think this is the very first event I, I went to and I was really like, uh, you know, deer in the headlights uh, kind of thing. You know, you had these guys wearing fishnet kind of things on their arms. You know, the guy had his like fake boobs in there and everyone wearing copious amounts of makeup. It was really like a, like a huge sensory experience for me, quite intoxicating. <clears throat> And uh, all culminates in uh, Blazing Swans. This was taken at Blazing Swan, I think, I think 2018. Um, a fire truck, a local fire truck from Coolan came along. Uh, it comes along every year and it just sprays water and, and you know gives everyone a nice bath because at that stage, because there's so such minimal amount of um, uh, showers there, everyone's probably quite smelly by the, the third or fourth day. So it's quite beneficial for everyone. And it um, all culminates in an Easter parade as well, where everyone dresses up and they all party through the um, uh, the, the makeshift streets. So this really uh, satisfied the appetite for me for that kind of visual sensory um, uh, experience that I'd been looking for that I hadn't found in the streets um, of Perth, but I'd gotten overseas. Uh, but you know, there was always that. Um, feeling afterwards going to these events that um, this still wasn't really the kind of street photography that I, that I wanted to do um, and, and it was something that I couldn't rely on it was just something uh, a different form of, of photography that was enjoyable on the side but my real passion was still street photography and I, I was simply just masking myself from from getting out there in the street and, and really open, opening my eyes more. Um, but yeah, nevertheless, uh, I'll, I'll always forget. I'll never forget these years. Uh, lots of incredibly memorable uh, characters and incredibly unique. I think the scene now has probably changed uh, a lot in the sense that if I went back there and tried to add to my project, the photos wouldn't quite uh, match. You know, it's a different community now. I think the events are a lot bigger. They're a lot more expensive to go to. These are only like five bucks to to go in. You know, so I guess trying to, to go back now and to add something to it wouldn't wouldn't quite match with everything that I've taken for beforehand. And took quite a lot of um, uh, landscapes as well. They're really beautiful at night um, with all the with all the campfires uh, and really good for the majority of probably nine out of ten of these bush dust there. Uh, people really um, stepped up and, and took upon themselves to really leave the space in um, the, the condition that they found it or in a better space. So you never really found too much uh, rubbish or anything lying around on the final day. People really did look after the land where they had these uh, events. Um, and I guess it really helped me to interact uh, with people uh, in this sense, um, to really get to close to people and really feel comfortable. Another one from the uh, Easter Parade. And one of the earlier ones there, really like drawn to these people with these laser discs. Uh, it took quite a while. They were mucking around with it and showing different patterns. And eventually uh, they both like stood next to each other and they, they shot out the same kind of pattern. It was really, really nice to see. And then one of my friends there, uh, Jade, um, uh, we eventually named ourselves Camp LJ. And uh, one of the, the running themes or in jokes there was uh, was ours. And uh, <laughs> we always brought along um, with 
I think they found this at Bunnings, I think, and they brought it to every kind of bush we went to, and they found a couple of our masks along the way. Uh, so I always took an opportunity to bring my camera, um, even when we were just relaxing back at the camp. So yeah, really good from an aesthetic point of view, really kind of interesting visual scenes uh, that um, I was really uh, fortunate to take photographs to of, but um, uh, eventually I would I would shift away from that because I, I, I naturally gravitated back towards um, wanting to develop my street photography further. Um, so back in Perth now, uh, what I I needed to do was to get out of this rut of uh, relying on on bush doors and theme parties and uh traveling overseas and i guess that that kind of tied in around the same time as the the pandemic when COVID hit and uh really really obviously a really bad um social um, event around the world um but i i try to use this opportunity to um uh, get out in the street because i had no choice i couldn't travel overseas um couldn't really travel um interstate um but we were quite fortunate in perth in Western Australia, where we had a unique kind of hard border there, as you may know for those tuning in here in Australia, uh, that we we kind of shut ourselves off from the eastern states and and we kind of opened up a lot earlier um, or, or life kind of continued in, in some kind of um, normality uh, in a sense through the pandemic. So some of the events and whatnot still continued. Uh, so in that in that sense, it forced me to get out of um, the the door the front front door more and to venture out and i did change jobs around the same time as well um, leaving my work in a prior uh, location where i worked monday to friday and then um like uh, lots of people in western australia joined the fifo flock where i flew in flew out so whilst i worked for a week um, i also had a week off so um, essentially, it kind of gave me a lot of time to head out in consecutive days and to spend a lot of hours on the street. And this was uh, a really, really big change for me in the way that I approach street photography. And um, I think this is probably like the biggest um, part of my development happened at this time. Um, and as around this time as well, that uh, I, I um, started hanging out with a really fantastic group of uh, street photographers. Uh, in in Perth, a really good community, and uh, we got to share, like, catch up, and and to go to a lot of these kind of events uh, together. So it's not kind of like a daunting experience, or you know, at least you have someone there to to um, uh, bounce off and to hang around. You know, it's not you're not by yourself. You're not um, you know flying solo uh, all the time. Uh, so that was like uh, with people like um, you know. Uh, Kirsty Greenland, like Lydia, uh, Lynn Gale, Rebecca, um, you know Ed Fedorovic, and and a few others there. Um, it was really good to to go out with them and to to really share a lot of these experiences at these events. Um, and I guess I guess part of part of uh, the low points that I experienced in my photography was um, not having somewhat, uh, some other street photographers uh, locally that I could uh, catch up with and, and bounce off. But once I started to, to meet up with them more and to go to a lot of these kind of events and social situations with them, um, you know, it, it really did improve like my outlook on, on photography a lot, um, knowing that there were people there that I could share my photographs with in a, in a chat room or meet locally because um, I'm a big advocate of mental health, um, especially not just with photography, but my work as well. Um, just a couple of really um, uh, major uh, things have happened in the last few years, not not with myself per se, but with others. And it's really like opened my eyes uh, towards towards mental health. And I believe like that's how I view photography. It's really is a, a form of um, therapy for me. Um, it really creates like a very um, uh, point of difference between the work that I do um, uh, up on the up on the mine site and back home, uh, and it's really kind of like a very therapeutic kind of um, uh, activity activity for me. Uh, this was at Beach Ball, which happens every year uh, down at City Beach towards the end of the year. Really fantastic event. Everyone dresses up in these ball gowns and whatnot, and then when the sun sets, everyone runs out into the uh, into the water.
Uh, and then I started really going to a lot more uh, social events, a lot more protests, uh, whatever I could find on Facebook uh, with that chat group with the other Perth photographers. We'd share links together um, with uh, different events that are coming up and, you know, we'd, we'd meet up or at least it, it was an opportunity to to find out about some events that we couldn't find or we didn't know about. Um, so if I needed something to do, I was really itching to go out, I could go refer to that chat room and probably find something on. So uh, all of these these were, this was a lot of change in circumstance uh, for me, um, going from traveling to these exotic locations or going to these bush doofs, um, now predominantly going out in my backyard, going to these events or fairs or whatever it may be. And it brought about a much more grounded approach um, and outlook on street photography. Um, and it, it basically made me look at Perth uh, with beginner, beginner eyes again. and um, it really helped me to really uh, find that passion again to to love my own um, city, my own hometown, and to eventually experiment with new styles and um, you know methods of, of street photography like non-human um, flash, you know, um, and and also a lot of candid uh, party stuff. Um, like a big, huge inf uh, inspiration influence for me is Lee Friedlander. I have a lot of his books, and um, I, I simply love them, especially his one on um, uh, parties. That's probably one of my favourite photo books, and it's um, been a big influence on me to really uh, get close to large congregations of people that are, um, you know, really having a really enjoyable time dancing or uh, singing or whatever it may be. So uh, I, I eventually really learned to uh, understand, to just enjoy the process uh, and that the final product is just a, you know, just a bonus byproduct um, of the adventures that I have in the street. Um, I enjoyed, learned to enjoy just the, you know, the interplay of light, human interaction uh, and the little puzzle games you play in your head uh, to create a frame. Uh, represents what you see in that kind of in, that kind of creative vision that you have. Uh, so, by um, you know having a more grounded approach uh, and outlook on things, it really improved um, my mental health uh, in regards to how I, I view photography and that creative process. Um, I wasn't worried about emulating what I did at Bushdorf's or emulating what I did in the workshops um, overseas. Um, I photographed Perth for what it, for how I see it and the style that I wanted. And I, I just completely removed myself from those prior years and and basically try to start afresh really. Uh, and, and that's when I also decided to take that break from uh, social media. Um, up until that point when the pandemic hit, I was really like, um, I I'd, I'd, for some reason, whatever, I gained a bit of traction on Instagram. I went from a couple of hundred followers to a couple of thousand. And then I went up to, I think it was like 11 or 12,000 followers. And then I was getting like over a thousand likes on my, my, my photographs that I uploaded. And it was kind of like this kind of like obsessive thing where I was chasing that for every single post. And, and I was jumping on the web, like the, what's the best time to post, how, what should I post, you know, the best hashtags to use, has the algorithm changed, uh, you know, how do you game the system and, and stuff like that? And, and um, it became kind of like this addictive thing where it wasn't, wasn't about the photo photography anymore. And, and it was more about uh, Instagram and the likes and the comments and I was chasing it. And um, which is fair enough if, 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 that, if, you, if that's part of your thing and it doesn't affect your photography, then so be it, uh, fair play to you. But it really uh, dragged me down a little bit because I'd, I'd, do, a, I'd do an upload and there, there'd be only like 10 comments or it'd be half amount of likes as the previous one. And it, and it, and it, and it made me self-doubt that photo that I put up is like, am I not really as good as what I think I am? Um, what, what do I do now? Like, do I take the photo down? Uh, what's the next photo I put up? Am I going to have a steady decline? Am I going to lose um, followers? So uh, all of that, 
all of that came into my my mind like racing thoughts one after the other one after the other um so basically uh two years ago I went cold turkey i did my last post and i thought that's that's it i need to take a break i need to stop thinking about posting um stop um comparing myself to others uh, which was something that played into my mind um this kind of like feelings of envy and um, this kind of like drive to compete against um uh others so I, I completely removed myself i was still on social media like just um commenting on on you know friends photos and looking at some fantastic new um photos from new street photographers and 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 branching out but i didn't post at all um for over two years uh and and i think that was a really um uh i'm really happy to have made that move it was a really uh good for my mental health um because I just removed myself for the chase for the likes, the chase for the comments, and and photography came um, back to something that was for myself and myself only. Um, I'm I'm there to challenge myself and to push the boundaries about how I express myself photographically, and uh, yeah, I think moving forward when I when I do do start posting again, um, I I'll, I'll know I've learnt my lessons not to fall into those traps again. Um, so yeah, by starting afresh, really, um, I learned to like unlearn, I guess, some of the the things I'd learned in the workshops and stuff like that. And um, starting afresh again, getting out to a lot of these protests and stuff like that, um, just just helped me to to be comfortable to to get a lot closer to people, um, to start like layering a lot more, um, and and uh, being around my, you know people in, in my own backyard a lot more um, so I kind of learned to eventually stuck around on scenes a lot longer um, I'd work a scene a long, lot longer than I would say five years ago where I'd only take a couple of snaps and move on uh, I'd stick around 10 15 minutes 20 minutes half an hour just to try and get get something that I was really happy with and you know work more angles use flash don't use flash uh, whatever it may be Uh, one of my um, any any kind of event run by the Indian Association is absolutely phenomenal. I think you ask any of the Perth Street photographers, they'll they'll definitely agree that they they have the best events. That a large huge congregation of people there with like the loud music, vivid colours, you know, throwing the coloured ink around. Um, they really do know how to have like a public public party. Definitely a messy experience. Uh, the cleanup's not nice, uh, but there's a, there's so much uh, exuberance and joy. Uh, it's just you can't help but love that human condition, uh, which is obviously like we're all street photographers. There, you have to have an inherent love uh, for the human condition, after all, to to actually do what we do. <clears throat> So it's uh, with these ones, it takes me about maybe 50 more frames to finally get warmed up and settled down. Um, but you know, once you get amongst that the kind of environment there and get settled, uh, it's, it's, it, it, things, things you know, become very fluid. Uh, and I guess that's a few people have asked me before about these photographs. They've messaged me on Instagram or um, on Facebook and I've just simply said, look, you, don't leave too early if you're feeling a bit uncomfortable just even just put your camera down just um just just walk amongst the people you know and just get warmed up stay there an extra half an hour and you'll find yourself a lot more at ease because people don't really care that you're there with the camera if anything they might even open up and they'll play in front of you a bit more you know to show off there's that sense of vanity there uh, so i went to quite a lot of um uh, protests as well uh for a variety of things um you know black lives matter um you know a lot of the anti-vax ones pro-vax um, i always went to them with a very neutral point of view um, i wasn't there to uh, particularly tell one story or another i was just simply there to to try and you know toe that line between erring on between documenting it and trying to incorporate some more uh candid kind of um uh, street elements as as well uh these guys were quite uh quite um 
interesting people in amongst this uh, huge anti-vax uh, rally that these guys had turned up out of nowhere, uh, I think down an alleyway. And basically they had become very prepared. They were all wearing their clothes, but um, we, the, the march was proceeding past this church then they started taking off their shirts and they had their partners with them their girlfriends they all had baby oil with them so they took out this baby oil and they started they started um oiling them up so they look all glossy in the sun there and that's why you see all these guys there with the fit bodies you know looking quite quite ripped there that they just previously they had their girlfriends oiling them up in front of everyone so quite a quite a really surreal kind of scene there that and amongst these people fighting for the right not to get vaccinated you had these guys here rocking up and um oiling up in front of everyone um so i i'd, I'd gone to a lot of these protests and um i would taken a lot of like probably generic kind of um protest photos and i kind of got a bit you know, by the books, um, kind of. So I try to think outside the square. How do I, how do I like try and incorporate some more like street elements into that one? And I, and I noticed along the way that a lot of these people holding a lot of these placards up and these signs that they, they just cut them out of whatever they had available, I guess. And um, uh, they'd written what they needed to on the front, their message for whatever it may be. But there was usually something on the on the reverse side of that. So I had quite a bit of fun there. Um, seeing these people here that they'd left like someone's cut it out of a refrigerator box there and uh someone's got their post there so it's quite a, uh, just a little fun interplay there um but yeah i, I mean uh the important thing there that i was that with any of these protests is to, to just go there with an open point of view whether or not you agree with the opinions of the people there or not uh I'm, I'm simply there just to, to express my, my uh, uh, you know, photographic vision and just to really kind of enjoy that human condition, really, people interacting, uh, people agreeing, disagreeing, or people just uh, congregating to express their point of views. And uh, by having that time off, I had like a week off um, straight. Um, it, it allowed me to go out cons on a consistent basis. And I guess uh, the, the really good benefit that was, I really got to probably find myself, find my kind of uh, more consistent style eventually, where I'd, I'd chopped and changed coming back from a workshop or or the bush doofs and stuff. It was hard to shoot that particular style, then go out in the street, try and emulate that. They, it didn't quite work together, but um, um, I got into a habit of going out in the street every day or at least every, you know, three, four days when I was back. And, and that kind of consistent kind of, uh, you know, photographic exercise of my family finally started to find my, my voice, uh, which, which took many years, um, really. And um, uh, just tried to inject a little bit more kind of like humour and stuff into my photos. Um, I really enjoyed this lady. Um, these these three were um, uh, asking for a portrait, and then I was quite I found it quite funny and you know weird that this this fourth lady decided to stand in the garden bed. And then uh, eventually, by that kind of repetitive action there, going out to all these kind of social events, um, going out to my own backyard, um, I began to to really open up and, and see these kind of scenes that I'd only seen overseas in exotic locations like India or Thailand, um, which I, I was at that time was certain that I wouldn't see in Perth. I thought like it's the most boring city in the world. Um, eventually I started seeing those kind of things happening in Perth. And I was like, well, yeah, I had done this to myself. I'd probably gone overseas and romanticized street photography too early by going on these workshops and, and setting this high standard of what um, uh, a kind of an, uh, an atmosphere environment could be um, with street where I should have done it probably in the verse and learned how to do it um, in my own backyard.
another one here from uh, one of the Bushdorf camps, um, the Liberators. Um, absolutely fantastic bunch of people. Um, I don't think I've seen a more positive, exuberant group of people in my life. Um, every, they go, just to give some context and background, they do these wonderful events where they'll go jump onto a bus and a train and they'll start dancing or they'll uh, create like a random conga line in the city and stuff like that just to get people out of their dreary nine to five or their commute to work. So um, just a shout out to them. They're a really fun bunch of people and um, uh, I jump on their Facebook every now and then to see if they've got an event in the local nearby that I can, you know, um, sneak off and um, take a few photographs of. And then um, I started a lot, a lot of flash work as well uh, lately over the last year or so, uh, which has opened up the whole different um, avenue for me. Really steep learning curve, um, but uh, it's been thoroughly enjoyable. Just that, that having some form of control over the light has been um, uh, incredibly rewarding. And um, uh, yeah, so getting closer and closer and closer um, to, to people, the more events that I go to, even inside a church here, um, I just um, just thought to myself, ah, oh, bugger it, just, you know, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Just, so I was really, really, really close uh, to these people here. Um, and then I've, uh, finding that kind of inner voice, um, that style that I'm comfortable with, um, I've really come to really uh, look for and uh, hunt for these kind of like these wider scenes where there's a lot of different stories happening in the frame uh you know from the guy from the the, the little kid you know grabbing his lip and you know board out of his head in the middle there and you got another bored kid there at the front um you know and you got that that mother in the background there like all backdrop by those banners there um so really like um, this is one of the things that i've always got in the back of my mind that i'm looking for um and then i started yes yeah, went to a lot of events that I normally wouldn't go to um, simply because like there's no real huge self-interest in it. Uh, so this is Power Cruise, big burnout comp, uh, something like I enjoy motor racing, uh, Formula One, but it's not like a burnout comp. It's not something that I'd go, hey, yeah, you know, I jump in the car, I'm going to go sit in the grass and watch burnouts all day. But um, um, I said to myself, look, it's probably something enjoyable there to go view and watch and there's probably some you know there's probably a large congregation of people so and I, and I was happy I went and, and that's kind of like the outlook I have now um, and implore to others as well um, to not just uh, you know confine yourself from going into the CBD in the city streets um, you know go out into the suburbs like you know Jesse Marlow or go to a lot to a lot of these kind of events you know like Martin Parr does and, and document those people there as well because that's where a lot of the really really you know good stuff happens um and then kind of like also those wider scenes there kind of have gravitated a lot with like a lot of geometric framing lately as well um with a lot of like poles or or lines in the frame to split the frame left or right and or to divide it into sections i've really kind of enjoyed that lately difficult to do um i haven't quite mastered it um, there's a lot of fantastic photographers you know like sam ferris and whatnot that have um you know perfected that and they're, they're really good masters of it uh and, and it's kind of like these kind of scenes uh here um i'm really lucky to have uh had quite a few well, a couple of well good mentors over the last couple of years uh so i tried to absorb as much information from others um as much as much as i can uh, to bounce ideas off and to, to you know review what i photographed and and one of the things that has really stuck with me is that um uh, jerry <laughs> jerry's in the room here uh jerry's uh, told me like to remind myself to have that outlook how do you want to you know, take photographs. Do you want to take an ordinary photo of an ordinary thing, or do you want to take an interesting photo of an ordinary thing? And then every now and then, you'll take an interesting photo of an interesting thing. So the the latter of those two, always trying to keep in the back of my mind. Like when I come to a, a particular scene, you won't always be able to find an interesting thing, but if you try and uh, take a um, interesting photo of an ordinary thing, um, you're, you're you're getting there.
So I just checked in, like trying a, a bit of like, you know, humor as well into the photos here and there. Uh, this is at the Royal Show. Uh, so last year I was, my first year I've gone there to try and take kind of Canada street photography. Um, very chaotic, very busy. I'm looking forward to going back there again this year and, and then trying my hand because there's just so much happening there. And we're all show again. Uh, I think it is true, like I say, like their uh, owners start looking like their pets eventually. And uh, every year there's a big there's a big orchard nearby, um, and they they have several seasons there, like um, autumn, and then they got the spring blossoming as well. Huge, huge congregation of people there. I love going there because there's just so much happening. There's quite an aesthetical backdrop there. And here I'm just using the flash to um, illuminate the foreground. Um, I've got like that leading lines of the cherry blossoms behind that, just trying to create like a three dimensional uh, image there. And just trying to find some similarities there. I was very lucky. Um, I was on the way to leaving actually, and this lady, I saw this lady, I kind of walked past her at first and I thought to myself, now surely not. And I doubled back around and um luckily she was hanging around and I could get my pop my flash back with my camera and um uh, take a few frames. Um and yeah, just just walking the suburbs as well. Um uh, just trying not to get into the trappings of, of relying on um, events, relying on um, exotic locations. Um, I just picked a random suburb and started walking there, uh, just trying to, to push myself to try and take an interesting photo of an ordinary thing. Um, so that's what one of the, the biggest learnings I've had in the last um, you know, six months to a year is to learn to love the suburbs as well. There's just as much there as there is in you know, a huge congregation of uh, our people. And uh, yeah, just this is outside the front of my front door. Uh, walking to my car to go out to do some street photography and um, just an ordinary photo, uh, ordinary thing, but just uh, just uh, quite like it. Um, you know, these magpies come every day, but um, just a, uh, I quite like this photo because it's just a reminder to take your photo, uh, sorry, take your camera everywhere, uh, not just with the the um, the outlook to ded dedicate yourself to take photographs. Just take it wherever you go. Um, so. Um, yeah, that's that's my presentation there. Um, it's uh, not so many stories behind the photographs, but uh, just just um, going through some of the mental challenges in my head, the writing, the highs and lows, and um, a lot of learnings from it uh, to learn to love photography wherever I am uh, and not to romanticize exotic locations as beautiful as they are. Um, this should be a genre of photography where you can literally go anywhere and uh, love it for what it is. And um, in the end, the, the, the final photographs are simply just a, a bonus, a cherry in the top. Um, I just love the, the act of walking around um, and, and that process and the adventure. And if I take a good photo, it's just a little little bonus. Oh, fan fantastic. Christian, you got some fantastic um, images there. Uh, where, if anyone would like to um, put any comments or any questions in the in the chat, feel free to do so. There's a few things here already, um, Christian. And yep. one of them is from Emma. Um, she's talking about shooting in, um, in India and other highly populated places where it's easy to get closer to people. Yep. And saying it's it's helpful to get your confidence up when you're beginning, but um, how did you find the experience getting close to people in Perth when, or where the uh, people 
are used to like a large sense of personal space. Oh, difficult, um, difficult, especially because Perth's got such a. I've just been to Melbourne recently, actually, uh, and there's a lot more people there, so it's a, a little bit um, easier, I would say, to to get closer to people. But um, it was very difficult at first, and and um, definitely not a. a um, uh, an advert for Fuji, but I was shooting a Nikon at the time. A uh, mirrorless Nikon had um, a loud shutter, uh, so that definitely kind of put me off a little bit. Um, every time I take a frame, there'd be that clack, and um, so I finally bought the the X100V with got that leaf shutter. So uh, you know, not, not to go on a talk about gear, but definitely I think that change to like a leaf shutter definitely help build my confidence because it's that little snick, and it, and it's a retro looking camera, so people aren't kind of um, uh, intimidated or they're not quite as um, aware of a, of a large camera this is a retro camera you kind of look like a tourist a little bit um, so yeah it's all it was all about little tricks as well um, that you might see or hear about like uh, pretend to like I, I I'm, I'm taking a photo of a scene I kind of I look past the people that I'm actually taking a photo of so I can kind of subconsciously see they're making eye contact with me but I'm not making eye contact with them I'm looking forward and taking photos so they might not be aware that i'm taking a photo of them because i'm not making eye contact with them or i do the old i'm um, pretend i'm changing the settings in my camera or i take a photo up um but some of the times as well if it's like a static kind of scene where people are like lingering around um i'll kind of just uh step into the scene become a participant and and kind of just stay there a while to you know people kind of just forget that I'm there eventually and then you take the photos they kind of you know they're not aware anymore um, or if it's in the street I think it's an important thing um, in when you're photographing in the street with a lot of people is to um, observe the pace that people are walking and maintain that same pace because people are going to be aware that there's someone else running or going a lot slower than you or the other people there. So if I'm kind of like in a wave of people there, especially after work or people going to work, I try and match that kind of same kind of pace and rhythm. So I'm like one of the one of the office workers going to work there. I'm kind of just meandering along. Um, it's going to be a lot more um, obvious there if I'm, unless it's sort of like a shot I have to get, I don't run to, to get the frame, you know, I can't just kind of m melt into the, the traffic, the foot traffic. Very good. So I love the uh, I love the look of the camera thing, like an old Winograd trick. He looks like he doesn't know what he's doing, and yeah, definitely nutter, you know. But uh, oh. yeah, um, uh, you said you're not going to talk about kit, but of course, there's a kit question. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, but yeah, no, um, and there was a question I was going to ask as well. And, and Jane, Jane is asked, uh, what camera flash are you using? Well, I was noticing some of that looked like off camera, and some looked like on. What what's the, what's the setup you got? Uh, yeah, yeah. So predominantly, my my Nikon, my event photos are with a with an on camera flash. Um, uh, I really like that for events because Nikon's got a very good TTL system. It's really seamless. Uh, it's really fluid um, and it's very, very fast refresh rate. Um, it's very consistent, um, but obviously it's not really um, uh, good out in the street. It's very large and cumbersome and it's a really big flash. But um, I started using the flash on the Fuji with a, uh, it's called the LightPix Q. Um, it's like the smallest off-camera flash you can get. The little receiver is tiny. Um, so I started with that, um, which is really, really nifty, and it's cheap. So I think everyone should have one of those. They're really, really handy, and it's simple. Um, it's basically there's no scroll dial, which I don't like for um, doing street because it's too cumbersome. It's just simple up, down for power, um, and that goes off-camera as well. But eventually, um, I, I, I wanted to use flash more and more uh, outdoors in the bright light and it simply wasn't bright enough didn't have the power output uh and uh so i eventually got a godox i'm not sure which model it is um it's like a mid-range one um i like it but as i mentioned previously one of the things i don't like about it is it's got the scroll wheel to just power you have to press a button then use the scroll and when i'm shooting like a protest um something like that you really got to be moving very quickly it's one of the things where you do actually run slow down run dart between people and changing the flash power and stuff on the flies a bit cum you know a bit cumbersome with that but um yeah i did get a very large flash simply to to try and match that exposure of the the bright light so i use two flashes depending on if it's night or day or what i'm going out to to use but they're both off camera and i predominantly shoot um off camera flash 
Awesome. I've got some um, I've got some comments here that uh, I can said he, he loves the, the bishop in the lavatory for the bush door for you, Rex. It's a wonderful image. Thank you. Um, yeah, Lynn Giles, his fab presentation. Thanks for your openness and your photography. It was brilliant. And Leone Rogers, too. Thanks for your work. Oh, fantastic work, Christian. Um, well, there's another question here from Chris Brown. He says, uh, how do you get your images out there, in quotes, whatever that means, without social media? Uh, well, product, well, I have actually haven't got any of my photos out there the last two years. The only places I've really um, put them are to, um, uh, you know, a couple of really good mentors, and the um, uh, I've got a, a Facebook chat with uh, the other the Perth Street photographers. So predominantly, I just um, uh, they get spammed a lot with a lot of the photos that I take after we, we meet up at a similar event or whatnot. So um, I've, I've just taken that that kind of self-choice to, to um, not post anything for, for a while uh, there. And I've just basically, the only people I've really shown um, a lot of those photos to are just um, a couple of couple of people at all, really. Um, and and they, they've, everyone's made fun of me, the people I've shown the photos to uh, saying that, you know, I need to start getting out there. I'm being lazy, a little bit laziness and procrastination, but I think it's it's really helped bring my love for for street uh, again by just not not posting out. But if you say like, how do, how do I get my photos out there? Um, I'll, I'll probably just start posting on on Instagram again, or probably another platform. Might jump on Fli Flickr if it's still alive again, um, or whatever it may be. Awesome. Um, well, I think Gail said great spam, though. <laughs> so, uh, Julius said, can't wait to get back in the streets of India with you, Christian. We're going to have so much fun. So there you go. That's something to look forward to. I'd love to join you guys, too, but <laughs> I'm jealous. There you go. Um, Karen says, very interesting presentation. Great photos. Same with Ken. It's nice to see your work, Christian. Um, what have I got? Um, I've got a, I have got a couple of questions for you before we go. Uh, yeah. yeah. Tell us more about the book Dufland that you mentioned. Yeah, Dufland. So Dufland, um, I've eventually will finish that. I've got a draft copy actually, uh, and I've done some um, storyboarding um, with it. So basically, it's a combination of um, it'll be a, a photo book based on my experiences uh, shooting the the bush doves and the fundraisers. And uh, yeah, so I, I started the draft when I knew not knew not a lot about sequencing. Um, or I was in my infancy of sequencing, so I'm I'm looking to come back to that now that I've I've probably learnt a lot more. Um, one of the things I didn't touch on um, before the um, during the talk there was that um, one of the things I've done as well is um, I've done a lot of um, couplets. So I'm on a plane a lot. I'm on. A, I'm basically got two flights a week. So I upload the photos to my phone and I, I muck around with this app to create couplets with my photos to to match marry photos up, and they can be completely unrelated from different years or bushdorf, non bushdorf, and I, I'm starting to find similarities in them or juxtaposition. Um, so I think uh, through that experience, I'm going to come back to. Um, Dufland and to probably look at the storyboard again and, and probably bring in some other photos, take out some other ones. And I think maybe, who knows, maybe in six months to a year, I'll probably look out to making a, a photo book from it. Awesome. Um, and when I was um, doing a, a little dig around before we, we, we've had this tonight's talk, um, I, I see that you're a co-curator of High lands of your city. So, are you, are you still involved with that project, or? Oh, not not for a while. Like I haven't checked my like I haven't checked my titles for for Instagram. Do still keep in touch with them, uh, but yeah, we're just uh, curating photos to be put up into uh, by lanes for your um, of your city there. Um, so that's yeah, it was on and off there for a little bit, but no, I haven't been involved for for quite um, for a little bit now. Okay, awesome. Um, nice. Well, well, I like to thank you kindly for your time tonight and um, on behalf of uh, all the ASPE members and um, and the ASPE community, I'd like to thank you for an absolutely fantastic presentation. So if people do want to check out your past work, I guess we can have a look at uh, your Insta feed at Christian underscore close. Is that? Is that's that, the one. That's the yep. one. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if you want to go and chase up some of the stuff from the past and have a look at what you've been up to. But um, Thank you very much. Um, well, we didn't have a, a, a committee meeting this month, so I don't really have any new real news to report to you. So um, there is a rumblings of a Melbourne Street Walk coming up in the not too distant future. So 
I guess you keep your eye on the inboxes for that. And um, uh, speaking of Instagram, I guess we got our monthly Instagram challenge happening, which is fill the frame. So just post your, if you want to post a photo with its filled frame, post it with that hashtag, uh, SB underscore fill the frame. So details are on our Insta feed. Uh, but that's about it. I don't have much more for tonight, but uh, thank you very much, Christian. And um, I hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for joining us and I hope to see you around on the streets really soon. So stay safe and uh, see you next month.